Welcome to our last program on the energetics unit. In this unit, we'll take a look at using bond enthalpies to predict the delta H or enthalpy change of a reaction. First of all, what is a bond enthalpy? It's the energy associated with breaking one mole of bonds in gaseous species. So for instance, if I take oxygen gas, O2, and I break that bond that exists between them, that double bond, I'll end up with two individual atoms of oxygen. The energy associated with doing that is in my IB data booklet, 498 kilojoules per mole. The other thing to note is that bond breaking is an endothermic process. Positive value requires energy to break bonds. Now, why does this table have bond enthalpies and average bond enthalpies? Let's consider methane for a moment, CH4 gas. If I break one mole of bonds, I would essentially now finish up with CH3 and an individual hydrogen atom. Let's say the energy I'm breaking is that bond, and let's say that's 410 kilojoules. If I go to another substance that also has carbon and hydrogen bonds in it, C2H6 gas, and I break one of those bonds, I would finish up with C2H5 gas and an individual hydrogen atom. Because the environment around these carbon-hydrogen bonds is different, breaking that bond might be 418 kilojoules. If I take an average of those two values, you might see what's in the IB data booklet. So some of the values in your IB data booklet represent an average bond enthalpy over a range of related compounds, while other values are the actual strength of the bond itself, because there isn't a range of compounds that have it. So they put the two together in this table. Let's look at how we can use bond enthalpies to predict the enthalpy change of a reaction. So I would like to determine the enthalpy change associated with burning methane. Here I begin with my two starting molecules. Always a good idea to have a sketch of your molecules so you know what bonds are being broken. And the idea is I'm going to take these and disassemble them into individual gaseous atoms. So I'm going to take my substances, disassemble them, and turn them into individual atoms. We know that that requires energy. So let's take a look at the kind of energy we need to do that. So I'm going to call this the bonds breaking. And bonds breaking always deals with my reactants. So I have two oxygen, oxygen double bonds to break from there and there. So that's two times 498. And I have one, two, three, four carbon hydrogen bonds to break. And that's four and they're 414 each. So to disassemble my reactants, 2,652 kilojoules of energy are required to tear it apart. So that's what I'll call my delta H1. The next thing I'm going to do is take those individual atoms and reassemble them now in my products. Now, this particular step, going from here to here, gives off energy as we form bonds. So I'm going to call that delta H2. So this is the bonds forming step, which releases energy, and it deals with my products. So the bonds that I'm forming, two carbon-oxygen double bonds, and 
they're 804 each and four oxygen hydrogen bonds uh, so four times 463 add those together and as mentioned earlier we release energy during the formation of a bond so this step here is a negative value now what I would like to do is to determine the heat associated with going from here directly to here so I want to know what's the heat to go right from here to here. Well, using a little modification of Hess's law here, it's the same as going this path and then down this path. So it's the same as taking my two steps, the breaking step and the forming step, and putting those two values together. And when I do that, I get ne negative 808 kilojoules. And just a note here, this, this value does differ from this value. Um, in this case, it could be attributed to the fact that we might have average bond enthalpies that di differ from the real substance itself. Sometimes it can also be attributed to changes of state, because remember, only gaseous substances. However, in this case, because everything is a gas, um, we can't use that reason. Anyway, that concludes our program on energetics. In our next unit, we'll take a look at rates of reaction.